Welcome to Miss Lovedoll's video on the characteristics of living things. The objectives of this video are to help you understand the characteristics of living things and to help you compare living things to non-living things. So let's get started. As we begin our study of biology, it helps to kind of know a little bit about what biologists actually do. Well, biology is the study of living things, and that includes everything from animals, plants, insects, and even bacteria. Biologists study all those things. In addition, some biologists study the fossils of formerly living things to get a, find out clues to our past. Biologists also study DNA and the molecules that make up living things. So how do we know if something is living? Well, there are seven characteristics that biologists generally use. Now, don't worry about writing this entire list down right now. We're going to go through each one of them. You can always come back to this list if you need to. First, all living things are made of cells. This is a picture of my kitty cat, Voltaire. And Voltaire is a multicellular organism, like all animals, plants, and fungi. But there are also single-celled organisms, like bacteria and every single cell carries out all of the basic functions of life. Another characteristic is that cells are surrounded by a membrane that keeps the insides of the cells separated from the outside environment. If you were to zoom in on Voltaire's whiskers or his ear or his skin cells or any other part of my little kitty, you would find that every single thing in that little animal is made up of cells. The second characteristic of living things is that they're organized. Living things contain highly organized complex structures called cells. And inside these cells are little tinier structures called organelles. And then those organelles are made up of very organized little molecules. So as you can see, there's an increased level of complexity in a living thing. The third characteristic that all living things have is sensitivity to their environment. All living things respond to stimuli from the outside environment. For example, plants grow towards the light. Your pupils will adjust to the light inside a room or when you go outside. The fourth characteristic is growth, development, and reproduction. All living things have the ability to grow and develop from a seed into a giant oak tree, from a little baby cheetah to a grown-up cheetah, and then from a baby and into an adult. In addition, all living things are able to reproduce and pass their hereditary material to their offspring. The fifth characteristic that all living things share is the ability to take in energy and use it to perform their life functions. Plants use the sun as their energy source and animals use other organisms for their food or their energy source. The sixth characteristic of living things is homeostasis. Homeostasis is the process by which living things maintain a stable internal environment that is different and separate from the outside environment. What this means is that all living things strive to keep themselves in balance. For example, humans need to stay at an internal temperature of 98.6. If we get colder than that, we shiver to warm up. And if we get warmer than that, then we sweat to cool down. The seventh characteristic that all living things have is evolutionary adaptation. All living things interact with other organisms in their environment and with the non-living components of their environment. This interaction influences their survival. If they have adaptations that are beneficial to their survival, then they can pass those adaptations down to their offspring. But if they have adaptations that are not beneficial, then they are less likely to pass those down to their offspring. And that's it for the characteristics of living things. Make sure that you have the following vocabulary words in your notes and that you have a good definition of them. And don't forget the three R's. Review your notes and make sure they make sense. Write a reflection, in this case a bubble map of the seven characteristics, and respond to this question. Describe the ways that a car is similar to a living thing and explain the ways that it is different. Be thorough. Remember, spelling, grammar, punctuation all count. And now you know about the characteristics of living things. Thanks for watching.